good afternoon one and all present here i feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all who are virtually present here for the webinar on patent rights and publications first and foremost with the divine blessing of our beloved founder of ksr educational institution late dr k s rangasamy ayya mjf now now i would like to invite a prithika roshni from second msc physics to present the welcome address a very pleasant afternoon to one and all present here i feel so glad to express my cordial welcome to all for the wonderful webinar we would like to start the program with divine blessings of honorable founder late lion dr k s rangasamy mjf kesar education institutions it is my great pleasure to welcome the dynamic chairman mr austrini wasan kesar education institutions in absentia my warm welcome to the executive directors mrs kavita srini wasan in absentia I feel glad to welcome our today's chief guest, Mr. R. Arun Kumar Sir, to this remarkable person, remarkable program. Welcome, you, sir. I express my cheerful welcome to the most active principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan, Kesar College of Arts and Science, Government, Absentia. I am happy to welcome Dr. V. P. Devarajan, Head Department of Physics, and all the faculty members, Kesar College of Arts and Science, Government. Welcome you all. Also, I gladly welcome all my friends to this beneficial program. Welcome you all. Thank you very much, Pratika Roshni, for your welcome address. Next, I would like to call upon C. Saumya from Second MSc Physics for Chief Guest introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel extremely honored to introduce the today's chief guest, Mr. R. Arun Kumar Sir, Assistant Professor in Senior Grade, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Ramco Institute of Technology, Rajapalayam. He currently pursuing PhD in Anna University, Chennai, in the field of solar flash distillation. He working as the Assistant Professor. Department of Mechanical Engineering, Ramco Institute of Technology, since 2016 onwards. He has received various awards, recognition, and achievements, particularly in guided a student project under the title "Increasing the Production Rate of Solar Steel for Sea Water Using Nanomaterials," which won first prize in ICT Academy Student Innovator Award at 2017. He also received Team Spirit Award, ISIE Future Award, Best Cross Pack Award, and Virtual Winner Award in various fields. He acted as member. in professional societies he has a many responsibilities held like member convener department faculty in charge laboratory in charge class advisor mentor and faculty in charge he has published several research papers in national and international reputed journals industrial training copyrights registered patent filed he also actively organized and participated in short term course online course seminars ftp workshops conference in various institutions we are very grateful to mr arun kumar sir for accepting our invitation and making his presence here once again i welcome you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you mia for your delighted introduction about the chief guest today is your opportunity to build tomorrow you want without taking much of your time i would like to invite honorable chief guest mr arun kumar sir Yeah. So am I audible, ma? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Now uh, let me start. Uh, so. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the management of uh, KSR College as well as uh, my own institute for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, as per the uh, as per the request uh, of of uh, this uh, today's session, so what is the plan of today's session? Will be that uh, uh, we'll be understanding what actually a patent is, and then uh, straight away we'll get into. how to draft a patent and what is the procedure to file a patent so this is what uh, uh, the request that have been given so let me share my screen
Yes, I hope uh, my screen is uh, presented right. Yeah, okay, fine. So, actually, to be more specific on uh, today's session, we'll be discussing, as I told you earlier, about a uh, patent and its uh, insights. But uh, before that, we need to understand uh, um, what is actually an IPR and what are the different types of IPR. And we need to have an understanding that patent is one of the types of IPR. So actually in India, we are administrating eight different types of intellectual property rights. And actually intellectual property rights is nothing but the legal right given to an intellectual property. So intellectual property uh, will be in form of uh, an uh, intangible way, right? So any kind of property that comes out of human intellect can be considered to be an intellectual property. So if I have some tangible property, for example, I'm having a mobile phone on my hand. And if I want to prove that this mobile phone belongs to me, what can I show? I can show the bill, right? So I can show the bill of this mobile number and uh, I'm sorry, this mobile model so that I can prove that uh, this belongs to me. In a similar way, I have any kind of tangible assets. I have some legal evidence to prove that this property belongs to me. In a similar way, if I want to prove that uh, an intangible property belongs to me, I need to have certain legal evidence. And uh, that's where this intellectual property rights comes into picture. So again, there are eight different types of intellectual property rights which are administrated in India. So those eight types are, uh, it has been listed here. And again, uh, one among that uh, will not be here. So, and the another one is planned parity and farmers rate protection. Just I'll give you a, a, a short brief what for these IP rights are meant for. The first one is pattern, which we'll deal in detail from the next slide. And the next one is trademark. So what actually a trademark is that uh, being a consumer, I'm, uh, I'm purchasing or I'm buying a good in the market. So I need to identify who is the original manufacturer or from whom this product have came out. So for that, I need to have certain uh, indications, right? Those marks can be registered under trademark. For example, a car is moving on the way, uh, it is moving on the road. If I want to identify which company it belongs to, so I'll be looking into the logo. So that logo gives me the identification of the original manufacturer. So any kind of mark that helps the consumer to categorize or distinguish between two servicing companies of a good or service, then those steps can be protected under trademark. For example, logo, uh, a caption, a color. So all these steps can be protected under the trademark. And next one is copyright. So any kind of creations, for example, it can be a literary work, it can be a uh, uh, drama, it can be a music, it can be a sound recording, it can be a computer programming. So these types of creations can be protected under copyright. And the next form of IP is industrial design. So what actually an industrial design is meant for is that for an aesthetic appearance. For example, I'm having a water bottle on the hand, right? So this water bottle is having a certain shape. The shape can be protected under industrial design. And again, I'm having a mobile phone and this mobile phone is in, in a rectangular shape. So this shape of the mobile can be protected under industrial design. And now obviously, uh, the, the, the back portion of this mobile phone. So the camera is fitted here. So this design can be protected under industrial design. So I'm wearing a shirt. The shirt is having a certain design that can be protected under industrial design. In that way, any kind of uh, aesthetic look that can be protected under industrial design. And next one is geographical indication. So for example, uh, if you are going to look into any commodity and if that commodity is having its unique feature or identity with respect to a specific geographical location means, then those steps can be protected under geographical indication. For example, you consider, uh, 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 for example, you can consider uh, Erol Manjil, right? Uh, this turmeric. So it is famous for, uh, it is famous in the uh, Erol is famous for uh, turmeric, right? It is protected under geographical indication. So it doesn't mean that uh, turmeric will be or it can be cultivated only in Erode. It is not so. It can be cultivated in some other locations also. But the quality of the turmeric which is cultivated in Erode is having that, uh, uh, what to say, that specific feature, right? So in that way, if any commodity is having its unique or a specific feature with respect to a geographical location means 
then those steps can be protected under GE. The next one is the trade secret, obviously. So I am running a company and I feel that one of my stuff, uh, which is related to my company is having its market advantage over the competitors means then those steps can be protected under trade secret. For example, uh, you can consider Google. So Google is not the only search engine in the world. There are a lot of the search engines also, but why mostly people prefer Google is that it is because of the accuracy of the result, right? So it gives a better accuracy of the result. And that accuracy is because of the program behind the screen. And that program is being protected under trade secret by Google. So in that way, if you feel any of the stuff which is related to your business is having a unique advantage, which gives you the market advantage over the competitor means, then those steps can be protected under uh, trade secret. And uh, next one is uh, uh, the integrated circuits. So integrated circuits, or uh, it can be simply uh, called as SICLDR. So semiconductor integrated circuits layout design registry protection. So this SICLDR is meant for the design of semiconductor or the design of integrated circuit, which we are going to manufacture. So this, this is what the uh, integrated circuit or SACLDR is meant for. And the last one is plant variety and farmers rate protection. If your invention is related to plant kingdom, then those steps can be protected under uh, plant variety and farmers rate protection. For example, you consider uh, uh, this genetically transformed seeds. So there are various genetically transformed seeds are available in the market. And those transformed seeds can be protected under uh, plant variety and farmers rate protection. These are all the other seven types of uh, uh, intellectual property rights. With this brief about the other type, now we'll get focused on the patent. So which is more relevant for uh, uh, the stakeholders of academia, either it's a student or a faculty member, yes. So what actually a patent in India is? Again, patent is a type of idea. So not patent alone is an idea. Patent is one among the eight different types of idea, which is meant for inventions and innovations. So in India, patent is given for inventions and innovation. India So patent in Tamil is called as Kapurime. What actually patent is meant for, I have told, and for what steps or what kind of invention patent will be granted. Again, patent is granted for inventions or innovations. And that inventions can be either a product or a process. It need not to be a product alone. Even it can be a process also. It can be a process also. It need not to be a product alone. It can be a process also. And again, that product which you are claiming to get patent grant can be either tangible or an intangible form. So mostly we used to have a myth that the patent will be granted only for the products which are physically available. That is tangible in nature, but it is not so. So patent is granted even for an intangible uh, products also. So again, I'm repeating, patent in India is granted for uh, invention or an innovation. And that invention can be either a product or a process. And that product can be either a, a tangible way or an intangible way. And it is for 20 years, the grant of patent is given in India. And uh, for the patent to be granted for an invention, it must satisfy three criteria. Those three criteria are novelty, inventive step, and industrial applicability. So I'll just give a brief about this now, what is this novelty? What is this inventive step and industrial applicability? So with this basic uh, uh, input, what we'll do is that we'll get into the drafting part of patent. So how to draft a button and how to file a patent. Okay, fine. So novelty, what actually a novelty is? So novel in the sense, it must be new. So no one in the world, anywhere or any part, they, 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 should, they shouldn't have thought about this idea or your invention. So, for example, you consider this gem clip. So, gem clip, it was actually meant for holding the paper, right? So, before using this gem clip, what we did is that we used to pierce the hole on the papers and we used to use a thread and we, we tie all the papers together to hold a bunch of paper. So, whereas uh, gem clip, without damaging the paper, it helps us to hold a large bunch of paper. Again, 
the problem with the gem flip is that we cannot hold again a large volume of paper a minimal number of paper can be hold with the help of this uh, uh, gem clip now to overcome this problem the binder clip was introduced right so this binder clip can uh, it, it was actually it, it is actually manufactured of different sizes and if you want to hold a large bunch of paper you can have a bigger size of binder clip so this is what got us a novelty and again the mechanism which is used in the binder clip is same as the mechanism which we are using in our clips that is uh, the clips that we use for uh, drying the cloth as well as the hair clip but the application is different right so this can be claimed to be novel and next one is uh, it should satisfy the criteria called the inventive step so what actually an inventive step is that either it must have a technical advancement or an economic significance so this is what the, the foremost important criteria that a patent examiner will be examining when you are going to file a patent so mostly uh, the patent uh, uh, the three criteria among the three criteria the third criteria which we will be discussing is about the industrial applicability so this industrial applicability and novelty will be easily satisfied whereas where do most of the patent gets failed is that in this inventive step so here in this inventive step again i'm stressing so either there must be a technical advancement or an economic significance so these one among these two has to be satisfied uh, when you are going to apply this patent application and the third one is as i told you earlier industrial applicability so where the idea which you are proposing the invention which you are proposing it should be manufacturable it must be manufacturable because you cannot come up with an uh, invention because uh, to the patent office you won't be presenting your invention in a in a physical way so instead what you will be doing is that you will be writing or you will be drafting the patent which is the techno legal document in which you will be declaring about all your invention and how it functions and how it is actually constructed all these stuff will be here uh mentioned through your draft but mostly 90 percentage of the time the patent office may not demand you to show the physical product or the final product which you are trying to claim so what i'm trying to convey here is that your invention it will be granted or it will be rejected based on the draft which you are submitting so you cannot draft Uh, draft about an invention which is not practically possible and that is why the patent office is analyzing the third criteria called as industrial applicability right so these are all the three criteria for which a application for which an application will be assessed to uh, uh, get a grant of patent and uh, again the last slide for your information in india tamil nadu is the state which is filing more number of patents so from the financial year 21 22 we have started to file more number of patent applications and uh, even in this year uh, 23 24 uh, yes all, almost this financial year is going to get closed just one month right uh, just 29 days or of there so in this financial year in india we have filed almost 90000 of patent applications and again among those 90000 of patent applications almost uh, a uh, maximum number of patent applications is five there filed by uh, tamil nadu right so this is what uh, uh, the statistics about uh, uh, just a minute yes. so this is what the stats about uh, tamil nadu and uh, this is what the base or an overview about uh, patent now hopefully you got a basic idea and by assuming that uh, most of you would have already uh, attended the previous session and uh, most of you would have known about this pattern with that assumption i am getting into the content uh, um this pattern uh, filing procedure yes now so hopefully everyone are uh, 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 watching my screen and again my screen is visible if i am right see now i'll show you one website so this is what the website uh, of our uh, ip india so this is the official website so in google 
you just type up ip india website and it will be taking you to an official website of our, our indian patent office so again uh, this is related to an ip office so here you can see the content related to patents design trademark and geographical indications in india these four forms of ip is functioning in the same office called as ipo intellectual property office so now i'll just show you how to draft a patent with a support of an application which we have already filed and we have got the grant also so i'll just open that file and again you just follow the step which i am following here it will be helpful for you to track the uh, progress of your uh, ip applications again i will start from the home so in the home you can see here at here this is a public search so you just click on this and it will be asking you the status so you can see the status of patent design trademark or gi so now we are discussing about patent so i am clicking on this patent so it will be asking that uh, whether you want to go to an external website and you obviously you need to give yes and here you can see it shows a tab application status so here once if you have filed a patent application it will be giving you an number so that uh, number is actually called as an application number now i type the application number for which we got the grant of patent and uh, with that uh, i'll explain you how to draft a pattern so after uh, typing this application number so you have to enter this captcha <laughs> yes so this shows the application uh, details so here you can see at the bottom so this patent application is getting uh, it, it is actually already granted so the yeah, the status will be shown here so at the right bottom corner you can see the a uh, tab called view documents so this view documents will be showing you all the communication that happened between you and the ip office related to the application number which you are searching right so this is what uh, the application is now i parallelly tell you how to draft a patent and what is the procedure to file a patent so uh, i request you all to make a note so that it will be helpful for you in the future so when you are going to draft a pattern and file it yes so first of all i will show you how to draft a pattern so what are all the content that must be present in a patent application right so i will show you that so hopefully you can uh, uh, see that application so this is actually form 2 and along with the form 2 the draft will be there so this is what the mandate field that must be present in a patent draft so the first one it should be a title so hopefully you are uh, making a note of it so first one it should be a title so title of your invention and again the invention which i am going to present now is dealing about a, a rover a rover in the sense it is actually a boat so what is that boat does is that uh, i just open the image and show you so that you will be having a uh, better understanding so this is what the boat is about yes so this is the rover and i am showing the top view i am showing it from the top view so i'll just show you an another view also so that uh, uh, you will be having a better understanding uh, yes so you consider this one so this is actually a rover it is showing the side view of the rover and again this is the top view so this is the rover and here at the bottom uh, or at behind you can see a wheel which is made of aluminium now what is the purpose of this uh, rover is that uh, we all face frequently the oil spill is happening in the sea right and we used to struggle to remove those oil spill so recently again uh, uh, if i write couple of months back uh, in chennai also we faced the same problem so the people were uh, struggling to remove this oil spill over the sea now what you can do is that uh, actually what we did is that uh, we have uh, uh, designed a rover so this is a rover and uh, towards uh, the the back end of this rover we have fitted a, ro a roller this is actually a wheel which is made of aluminum as i told you earlier now what does this wheel is that it will be keep on rotating and uh, 
I'll show you this part. See, this rover will be on the sea and uh, this wheel will be partially dipped into the sea. This wheel will be partially dipped into the sea. And once this motor starts to rotate, this wheel also starts to rotate. Now, aluminum will be having a tendency to uh, uh, attract this oil, right? So hopefully you would have seen that. Uh, so oil will be having the sticky property. It is actually called as the viscosity. The edge movement is called as a viscosity. So it is highly viscous fluid. So because of this viscosity, it will be sticking onto this aluminum wheel. And once this wheel starts to rotate, here at the end, the closer to this rover, you can see a, 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 a portion. This portion is actually a kind of uh, a collector. So it is actually a collector, collect a kind of collector where at the end of this wheel, there will be a brush. There will be a brush like structure. And once the wheel, which is actually dipped and collecting the oil, once it moves towards this end, this brush will be making the oil to flow into this passage and it will be collecting in this, uh, it will be getting collected in this uh, uh, part. So this is what the invention is about, okay? So hopefully you got an idea. So what this invention which we are going to talk. So this is what the invention and for this invention, we have coined the name as oil spill segregating rover, right? And again, if you are going to um, uh, draft a patent application for your invention and if it is going to reflect a product, the name should be like a product. And if you are going to claim a process, then in your title, there must be a word called the process, a process for so-and-so. So if it is going to be a product, you can directly mention the, uh, the name that you have given. So we have coined the name as oil spill segregating rover. So again, the title should be in such a way that the examiner, once reading the title, he or she must come to uh, an overview or uh, he or she must have some understanding that what the invention will be about. So if I read oil spill segregating rover as an examiner for the first time, if I'm reading the title, I can come to a conclusion that this invention is related to a rover, which is going to segregate oil, right? And here it is mentioned as oil spill. So this oil is getting spilled, but, I, but as an examiner, I don't know where this rover will be collecting the spilled oil. So, this is what the title should uh, uh, give you. So title should give a brief idea. And the constraint in title is that it should not exceed 15 words. It should not exceed 15 words. So that is the constraint. And next, after title, you should uh, um, give a brief background of your invention. Because while examining your application, the examiner will read from the top to bottom of your draft, right? From the top to bottom. So while reading the title as an examiner i'll be having a broad broad idea what your invention is about and once after i'm reading the second part that is background this broad area will be getting narrowed down so your flow of content should be in such a way that while keep on reading your content the examiner must get a narrow down idea so first by reading the title i have they have got a broad idea now, after uh, reading this background of the invention, I will just try to understand what is the purpose of this invention? What is the problem it is going to solve? So here you can see this invention leads to a device for removing oil spill in the sea. So clearly I have explained. So there is a problem of spill in oil. That is, I'm sorry, spilling of oil in the sea. So for uh, overcoming that problem, there is a device called uh, this oil spill segregating rover. So just a two or three line, you need to give brief about your invention. And next one is the field and the use of invention. So where your invention is going to be used. So again, it is going to be used in the C. So here in this field of invention, you need to give an idea about prior out of state. So prior out of state in the sense, oil spill is a problem. It is an universal problem in the C. And again, this oil spill segregating rover is, is not the only solution. Across the world, many people would have came up with many different solutions. Now, what is the role of me while applying a, applying a patent application is that I need to represent or I need to mention what are all the existing other solutions to address the same problem. 
so that i have to mention in this uh, 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 in this graph so that is what called as prior art of state so here you can see we have addressed what are all the various solutions that are being given for this same problem so here you can see we have referred an us pattern and again an another us pattern again an us pattern us pattern and again an indian pattern so we have mentioned that these are all some existing solutions which has been already provided for the same problem and again the examiner will be getting an understanding how it will be differing from the existing solution how they will be getting the difference or how they will be understanding the difference based on your uh, uh, brief summary and detailed description so this is what we have to do the first thing is you need to mention the title of the invention which should not exceed 15 words the second one is you need to write about the background of invention in which you need to specify the field of invention as well as the prior art of state that is the existing solution now the third part is object of the invention so what is actually the purpose of invention right so here you can see we have written the objectors we have confined to two objects so usually object in the sense objective what is the purpose of the invention so that is what uh, legally it is called as object so object of the invention is the principal object of the invention is to make an oil spill segregating rover which removes the oil spilled in the sea water and collects oil alone so it is going to collect the oil alone when compared with any existing methods so we have already proposed these are all some existing methods this also helps to collect the oil whereas the present invention will collect the oil in a better way and with a simple mechanism so that is what our first objective is so here in my objective i am not specifying that my invention is going to collect the oil spill because the oil spill problem is addressed already by many solutions out there how that solution is differing that is what i am going to claim in my objective so in what way it is differing and the second objective is the another object of this invention is to build a compact and then cost effective oil spill segregating rover as i told you earlier multiple solutions are there that is the effectiveness of collecting the oil is comparatively low so here our objective is to collect the oil which is spilled over the sea at a faster rate or with a better efficiency and at a low cost so that is what our objective is going to be so that is what the object of the invention now this is the purpose now we'll move on to the fourth part which we have to write that is brief summary of your invention so here what you have to do is that you need to give a brief about your invention so probably some pg students are there and ug students are there so i hope uh, you know what is actually an abstract right so abstract again uh, uh, you would have came across this in your schoolings you would have uh, you would have came across this comprehension right so one third of the given content you need to write in a precise way so that precise paragraph will be completely narrating what actually the entire story is so that precise way of representing your invention is nothing but brief summary of your invention so here you need to summarize what your invention is actually about in a brief way right in a precise way and here in between you, you can see i have represented various numbers 1 2 3 4 5 what actually those numbers are meant for is that so here in this invention that is in the drawing you can see we have represented various numbers right 1 2 3 4 5 so you should not and again i'm stressing and you must not you must not represent any textual content in the diagram so diagram should be a separate enclosure and draft should be a separate enclosure so in the draft there should not be any diagram and in diagram part there should not be any text so in textual content there should not be any diagram and in the diagram part there should not be any textual content right so here in the diagram part what i need to do is that i need to just represent the parts as 1 2 3 4 5 5 and what this one stands for what this two stands for all those steps must be mentioned only in your brief summary of the invention so here you can see i have given a brief summary about the working of this uh, invention where i have represented the parts number 
So here, once if the examiner is going to see, here I have given the number as one. So if they want to identify or understand what actually one is, they need to go to the graph and see here, one is actually an aluminum beam. And what does this two represent? This two is representing a rover. So in that way, they'll be examining. And again, I'm stressing in diagram, there should not be any textual content. And in the textual content, there should not be any diagram. This is a mandate part of pattern drafting. And again, the brief description of the drawing. So here in the drawing, I have given various figures, okay, various views of uh, the invention. And what are all those views? It should be represented in this brief description of the drawing. So we are done with title of the invention, background of the invention, object of the invention, brief description of the invention, and brief description of the drawing. So we have done with five parts of the invention. Now the last important part is the detailed description of your invention. So here you need to write your invention in two ways. It should be mentioned in structural way as well as in the functional way. I'll just give you an example. What is actually structural and functional? See, I'm going to uh, uh, describe about this aluminum wheel, right? So in a structural way, how can I describe the aluminum wheel? For example, say this aluminum wheel is having a diameter of so and so uh, centimeters. And uh, uh, at the middle of the uh, aluminum wheel, there is a motor which will be continuously running this aluminum wheel. And this aluminum wheel, uh, the one end of this aluminum wheel is fixed to this collector where the oil will be getting collected. So whatever I have said now, it is describing about the structural part how it is constructed to the entire invention. Now you need to describe about the functional aspect also. What is the purpose of aluminum wheel? Now what I'm going to write, this aluminum wheel will be uh, rotating continuously with the help of this uh, uh, DC motor, where this aluminum wheel will be sticking the oil to its surface and uh, which will be collected in this uh, collector part. So now I'm explaining what is the function of the aluminum wheel. Here I was telling about the constructional feature in which material it is manufactured or in which material it is made of and how it is connected to the entire uh, invention. In the second part, I have described how it is going to function. So it is going to rotate where the 30 percentage of the uh, wheel will be dipped into the sea so that while coming out of the sea surface, the oil will be getting sticked on to this uh, aluminum wheel. Now I'm telling about the functional aspect, right? So that is what uh, uh, the detailed description should be there. So in your detailed description, you need to explain each and every part uh, in a functional way also, as well as in a structural way. So that is about the description of your drawing, I'm sorry, uh, the draft of your invention. So that is simple. So you can stick on to these content. So title of the invention, Next one is uh, the background of the invention. Third one is object of the invention. Fourth one is, uh, uh, that is a summary of your invention. Fifth one is brief description of your drawing. And the sixth one is detailed description of your drawing. So this is what you need to fill. Now I'll tell you, along with this draft, what are all the other steps need to be uh, prepared? The first one is your drawing. As I told you earlier, this is the template of the drawing. At the left the top corner, it should have the details of the applicant. And then each and every page, it must be represented. What is the page number, number of sheet, and what is the seat number? And left side of the application, that must be application number, right? And uh, towards the bottom of the sheet, that must be the signature of all the applicants. So this is what the template of uh, and uh, the drawing is about, right? Now here you can see, you need to represent if your invention is actually having any a tangible form, you need to represent your uh, invention in a pictorial way. So it need to be represented with different views. How does the invention looks from the front view? How does the invention looks from the other side of the view, top view, bottom view, left side, right side view, front and rear view, all these steps along with the numbers. The number is more important, which you will be calling or which you'll be referring in your summary of the invention as well as brief description of the drawing. So the next important part after the drafting is your diagram. Now, 
apart from this diagram we need to prepare other two documents one is called as abstract as i as i told you earlier already abstract is nothing but it will be giving or it will be summarizing your invention so this abstract should be in a separate page where the abstract should not exceed 150 words 150 abstract should not exceed 150 so no three but what they are going to be able to do abstract now the last and most important part is claim so claim is nothing but what you are going to claim in your invention so that is more important for example uh, in this invention what we actually claim is that we claim an oil spill segregating rover which has a boat an aluminum wheel and a scrubber so again in this diagram you can see we have five different components right a boat a wheel and a dc motor and a collector path and a scrubber so these are all the five different parts whereas we have not claimed all the five components we have claimed only the three components because a collecting tank is already a known concept or a known or a known device and similarly a dc motor it is also a known device and uh, the known device is used in this invention for the same application right for the same purpose as we are using it in general it has not been used for a different purpose similarly a collecting tank it is meant for collecting something here also in this invention we are we are collecting it for the same purpose and again uh, you can see Uh, the aluminium wheel so aluminium aluminium can be used for multi purpose whereas in this invention we are using it in a different unique way right so that is why we are claiming that so your claim should start always with the title of the invention the oil spill segregating rover which comprises of so there are two terms can be used one is consist of and other one is comprises of so the difference between consist of and comprises of is that if you are using the term called consist of for example the invention x consists of a b and c components a b and c if that is the word you are using you are trying to convey that this device x is having only three components a b and c whereas if you use the word the invention x comprises of a b and c means you are conveying that this invention x is having the components a b and c and again there are some more components also which i am not uh, willing to claim see uh, if you, if i want to tell rightly in tamil means uh, for example uh, in the news la vasikumbodhu ninga paakala idu utpada abindru or vaarthu irukku illaya utpada appa utpada na enna artham na sonna dhala irukudhu idillama vera edho or vishayamum irukum so adoda meaning na enna appadina consist of right whereas com uh, sorry comprises of whereas consist of appadina idu mattum na irukku appingiradha neenga solreenga seringala so the claim should be always started with your invention title and again in the first claim you need to mention what are all the various components which you like to claim in this invention so these are all the three components which we are willing to claim and in the claim number 1 while claiming every uh, uh, part of uh, the claim that is for example you consider an oil spill segregating rover which is used to collect the oil spill so while drafting the claim i am mentioning the title along with its function as an entire invention which is meant for oil spill in the top layer of the sea comprises the first one a boat so i am going to claim the boat boat which is floating over the sea and collects the oil collected from the sea see i am i am telling the functional part also and again the second subdivision is a second component which i am claiming is an aluminum wheel at one end of the board so i am explaining where this aluminum wheel is located so this is the structural part so this aluminum wheel is located at the one end of the board the structural part and next helps in observing the oil from the sea now i am explaining about the functional part so while drafting the claim you always have in your mind that you are claiming both structural as well as the functional aspect and again the scrubber connected to the aluminum wheel i am 
explaining in a structural way. So the scrubber is connected to an aluminum beam. This is the structural part to remove the oil sticking onto the beam. Now this is the functional part. So the scrubber helps to remove the oil from the beam. So this is what you need to keep in your mind. So drafting a claim is not a big deal at all. So you need to have in your mind that it should be uh, written in both structural as well as functional aspect. So that is the important thing related to claim. So that is all about uh, the drafting part. Now we'll move on to the procedure, filing procedure. So in filing procedure, for filing a patent, you need to have three mandate forms. The first one is form number one. I'll just open and show you. This is form number one, which we have filed for our invention. And you can see the fees for uh, filing form number one is 1750 for physical filing. And for e-filing, it is 1600. Yes. So here in this form, you need to describe what type of application. If you are going to apply in an, as an individual or as an uh, institution, it is an ordinary application. And uh, you need to give the details of all applicants. So who are all applicants? Either it can be an individual or an institute also. And uh, here, who is going to file? A natural person. If you are going to file, then you need to tick natural person. If you are going to file in the name of your institute, you need to tick this other. And at the right side, you need to mention as an educational institution. And here, the inventor detail. So if you are going to file in the name of the institute, and at this four, question number four, you need to type up, uh, no, and then you need to furnish the detail of the inventors. Whereas if you are going to file on your own name, you can just put a tick mark on this, yes. And next one is the title of the invention. And uh, the remaining part, you need not to fill. And at the bottom or towards the end, you can see you need to furnish this detail. So question number 13, complete specification, the number of pages, as I shown in the beginning. So here you can see the total number of pages, five plus the forms. So totally there are seven pages. Next one is the number of claims. So we have revised the claim into three. So you need to specify it as three and the number of pages is one. Abstract, one page and number of drawings. We have included 11 number of drawings in 12 pages. So this is what the brief you have to give and you need to pay the fee of uh, the suitable fee. I'll just explain you the fee later. So as of now, I have told you the, uh, the fee for, for filing form number one is 1750 rupees and towards the end all the applicant have to sign so this is what the form number one is form number two is here so you can see the form number two so what kind of specification you're going to file either a provisional or a complete specification i hope you already know the difference between complete filing and provisional filing so we have filed a complete specification so we have mentioned it is a complete specification and followed by the details of the applicant and uh, the other details. So if it is going to be a complete, you need to type here, the following specification describes the invention and the way it performs. Description, yes, here the description starts. It is annexed or it is enclosed. Claim, yes, we have already drafted the claim, which is also enclosed. And uh, the next one is, uh, uh, yes, data and signature. As I told in the beginning, it is provided at the end. So here you can see, at the end of every draft, you need to uh, put your signature of all the applicants. And next one is the abstract of the invention. I have already shown it should not exceed 150 words. So this is what the form number two you need to file. Now the third mandate form is form number 18. And for filing form number 18, the cost you can see, you can follow my cursor if I'm right, it is 4,400. So already I have shown the fees as 1,750 for form number one and for form number uh, 80, it is 4,400, right? So cumulatively, the total number of, uh, I mean, uh, the total amount which you are going to spend for uh, uh, these two forms is 6,150 rupees, right? If you are going for online filing, e-filing, then 10% deduction will be provided. So form number one, the cost is 1,600. And for form number 18, the cost is 4,000 rupees. So cumulatively, the, the cost will be 5,800 rupees. 
sorry, 5,600 rupees. So in form number 18, again, you need to furnish all the details of the applicant. And uh, here at the bottom, you need to sign. So these are all three mandate forms. And the next optional form is form number nine, which we used to always buy. It is meant for yearly publication. Again, it is optional. You may choose this or you may not choose this. I'll just tell you the difference or uh, the purpose of using this form. See, if you are uh, moving on a four way, a toll gate is coming. So you need to pass the toll gate. So if you want to pass the toll gate uh, uh, without waiting means what you'll be doing, you'll be having the fast tag. So in FASTAG, the money will be directly detected from the QR code which is getting scanned or this barcode which is getting scanned and you can easily go away. Whereas if you have cash on your hand, you need to wait in the queue, right? In a similar way, while processing a patent application, the second stage of uh, uh, processing a patent application is publication. So publication is nothing but it is kind of a notification. The IP office is notifying all the public in India that so-and-so person have approached me for a grant of patent for so-and-so invention. So it is just notifying all the people in the country. And if you have any objection for granting a patent under this title for so-and-so person, you can object. So that is the meaning of this publication, right? So normally a patent application to get published, it will take 18 months of time. So hardly one and a half years. Once after your application is getting published and once after you are filing the form number 18, that is request for examination only, your application will be undergoing examination, right? Your application will be undergoing examination. Whereas you need to wait for one and a half years for the regular process. But if you feel that I, I, I don't want to wait for one and a half years, I need to process my application at a faster rate means then you can opt this form number nine. So which is an optional form, which is called as a request for publication. Here you can see it is actually a request for publication. So what is the benefit of this of a, uh, form is that if you are filing a patent today, for example, say it is 3 2 20, I'm sorry, 2 3 20, 24, today is Saturday. Every Friday, patent office will be published in the journal. And if you file this form number nine, your invention will be published in the journal of patent office within a month whereas if you don't file this form it will take 18 months whereas if you file it will take just one month of time within a month they'll be publishing your invention so that is the benefit of this form and again it is optional if you will if you are willing to go now you need to pay 2750 rupees for uh, uh, physical filing and uh, if you want to go through online, that is e-filing means, then you can deduct 250 rupees. So your form filing will be around uh, 2,500. So this is what the total cost. So as I have already shown in the form number one, right? I have shown you the cost of filing is 8,900. So the form number one, yes, here. I have, I have typed the uh, fee is 8,900. That is form 1,750 plus form number 9, 2,750, and form number 18, 4,400. Cumulatively, it is 8,900. We have opted for physical filing. Whereas if you opt for an online filing, that is e-filing, then you can uh, deduct 10% uh, of the fee. So your filing cost will be approximately 8,000 or 8,100 rupees. So this is what the filing procedure which you have to follow to file a patent in your, uh, uh, that is in uh, India. Now, what is actually the procedure? It will happen. So you have filed your patent by filling all these forms. Now your application will be undergoing an examination where the examiner will be examining your application. Once after examining your application, the patent office will be issuing you an FER, which is called as first examination report. So this is what the FER we received for this particular invention. So here it will be looking like this. So this is what the FER is. So you can see it is showing there is novelty. Under novelty, all the claims are yes. Under inventive, it is claiming that there is no inventive, inventive step. And under industrial applicability, it is claiming that there is industrial applicability. And they have uh, referred to two different inventions. These two inventions are something or uh, it is closer to the invention which we are claiming. 
Now, what we need to do is that once after this in when this FER is received, so here you can see the FER is received in the date of 26 1 2021. And you need to respond within six months. That is here at the bottom, you can see within six months, that is 26 7 2021. And I'll show you, we have already responded to it. So, and uh, in the month of May, we have responded. And uh, yes, sorry, yes, 26 7 2021, we have uh, responded. That is in the month of July. And uh, this is what our uh, uh, responses. So that is what called as correspondence to the FER reply. So these are all the objections given by the inman, I mean the examiner or the controller. So for those objections, we have referred this document and we defended in what way our invention is differing from the uh, suggested inventions. So this is what the objection and for the objection, we have responded it. And once after the FER response, if it is getting satisfied, if the examiner or the controller feels satisfied with your invention, directly you will be getting the grant of patent. So this is the patent certificate. And in recent days, it have changed. Uh, they have changed the color into that uh, yellowish color. Whereas if they are not satisfied with your FER response, then they'll be calling you for hearing. So hearing uh, is a kind of uh, virtual hearing. So on the other end, uh, uh, in an in a online platform, the examiner or the controller will be there and uh, they'll be sharing you the link and you need to join the link and they'll be uh, uh, questioning all those objections and you need, uh, you need to defend your uh, objections. And uh, if they are satisfied uh, in that hearing, they'll be giving you the grant of patent. Or if they are not satisfied, there are chances for you to get an extended hearing or else they will reject your application. And uh, for FER reply, you can take six months of time. Whereas for hearing response, you should reply within 15 days, one five, 15 days. So this is what the procedure for filing patent in India. So I have told the different types of IPR and I have mentioned you what is uh, actually an uh, IPR is and what are the different types of IPR. And I have told you a detailed, uh, uh, um, uh, that is a brief content about uh, patent. And I have shown you how to draft a patent and what are all the forms to be filled and what is the procedure to file the patent application along with the forms. Now I just conclude my session with the assistance which is given by the government of India to uh, apply for a patent. So there is a scheme called Kapila. So Kapila in the sense, uh, it is called as Kalam program for IP literacy awareness. So here you can see it is Kalam program for IP literacy awareness. So it is meant for all kinds of higher educational institutions, irrespective of the discipline. It is meant for all kinds of higher educational institutions. So here you can get a funding support, a partial funding support for your filing of patent. So as I told you early, for filing your patent, it will be uh, uh, the cost of filing is 8,900. And again, form number nine is optional. If you ignore that, for physical filing, the cost is 6,150 rupees. And for e-filing, the cost is 5,800. What the government does is that, if you are going to file any patent in the name of your institution, or your institution should be added as a co-applicant, then the government reimburses partial fees which you have paid for form number one and form number 18. So form number for form number one and 18, the total cost for e-filing is 5,800. So yes, uh, 5,600, uh, sorry, 5,600, for which the government is reimbursing partial amount, that is 2,800. To what extent the government is supporting? It is supporting financially for every higher educational institutes in every financial year, and higher education institutes can claim for 40 patent applications. So, in every financial year, you can claim for 40 patent applications, the partial amount. So, 40 into 2800, approximately the government reimbursed 1 lakh 12,000 rupees or 1 lakh 15,000 rupees to the institution for filing. 
so this is a beautiful scheme which is it which is meant for exclusively encouraging higher educational institutes to file patents so again if you are coming up with any invention and if you add your uh, and again uh, if you file in the name of your institute or your institute as a co applicant you can avail the scheme and this scheme helps you to get a partial uh, reimbursement and an institute can get a maximum of as i told you only 1 lakh 12000 rupees or 1 lakh 15000 rupees for patent filing and again if your institution is uh, missing you can use the same uh, again 1 lakh 12000 or 15000 rupees for filing further more applications so if you are going to file two applications now with a reimbursement you can apply four applications so that is what the benefit of this uh, uh, scheme so that is all from my side so under kapila scheme what has to be done is that uh, you need to you in the sense uh, the institute need to create an uh, uh, unique id and uh, under that uh, account uh, you need to or uh, i mean uh, the representation of the institutions so what they have to do is that uh, they need to form a committee for kapila that kapila committee have to scrutinize the application which is filed for patent and uh, those applications after the recommendation from the scrutiny committee they can file their uh, uh, applications under this kapila scheme for reimbursement so this is what uh, uh, the content uh, which i have uh, concluded which i am uh, going to complete uh, so again uh, as far as the request is made uh, so i have given the brief about uh, what is actually an ipr what are the different types of ipr and what are those types of ipr are meant for and we had a detailed uh, uh, overview about uh, patent and uh, the drafting of patent filing procedure and last the support system for filing a patent in india so with this i am done and uh, now the forum is open for uh, question if you have any clarifications you can ask so thank you for this opportunity thank you so much sir for your knowledge and presentation we really gained many ideas about the patent rights and publication dear students and faculty members if you have any questions about this session feel free to ask our chief guest and i hope uh, there are no clarifications now what i do is that uh, i leave my uh, email id and uh, phone number in the chat box and uh, later if you have any clarifications you can ask me thank you Once again, thank you for your attention. We really thankful for your amazing lectures. Now let me invite K R Devasri from Second Faculty Physics for deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you to one thousand. Thank you is one such prayer among them. It's a privilege to propose a vote of thanks to all. I have witnessed it as a memorable and successful event. First, I would like to express my thanks from the depth of my heart to our honorable chairman, Mr. R. Srinivasan Sir, who is the pillar of KSR Educational Institutions in absentia. I extend my thanks to the executive directors, Mrs. Kavita Srinivasan Ma'am, 
who is the backbone of KSR educational institutions in absentia. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and give, not giving it. Now, I take this opportunity in the form of words to thank our chief guest, Arun Kumar, sir. Thank you, sir. Deepest regards and a sincere thanks to Dr. M. Kartigayan, sir, the principal, KSR College of Arts and Science for Women, who is the backbone and support. My hearty thanks to the heads, the faculty members, and the participants from various departments of KSR College of Arts and Science for Women for their support. Thank you all. Thank you, the first three. Students, kindly fill the feedback form. Yes, thank you, both. Thank you.